God is with you. Welcome this morning as we gather to open ourselves to the presence of God who is among us and with us and around us all the time. And so we're only here to become aware of something that's already there. Uh, this is a, a progressive and inclusive congregation and we welcome you if you're visiting uh, for the first time uh, to this place. Uh, I have just uh, you'll be hearing some more announcements, and you can see a lot of the announcements printed in your bulletin, but here's one that didn't make it. Um, there's going to be uh, some uh, rallies uh, at, the, at City Hall tomorrow. Uh, BREAD, uh, a justice organization here in Columbus, uh, is, is uh, drawing attention to the affordable housing crisis in Columbus, and uh, so some of us will be on the outside of City Hall. Some of us will be in the inside of City Hall. It's going to be get, uh, start around 5 o'clock. So if you, I invite you to come. Uh, I'm going to be one of the speakers, so I invite you to come if you want to uh, be a part of that demonstration. Uh, and it's going to be beginning around 5, so you might want to get there a little bit early. That's uh, tomorrow at City Hall. So we do welcome you all. Uh, let's take a moment to sing our welcome song together and let's stand and do this so we have in the bulletin. Welcome everyone and a happy Mother's Day. Uh, this is an announcement from the Board of Deacons and Shirley Blanton that there are flowers out in the narthex and for all women. So please pick one up before you leave. And Shirley Blanton is sitting right there in the back. If you'd raise your hand so everyone knows who you are. If you have questions, please feel free to ask her. Uh, so welcome to those of you here in person, and to those of you who are online, please give everyone a wave who is online, let them know that they are welcome. Uh, there are yellow prayer slips in the pew backs near you, so you're invited to fill one of those out and give it to Pastor Steve during our prayer time. We also have blue pew pads at the end of every row, and these are reviewed during the week so that we can follow up with visitors or friends. So please pass these down the row if you would. And while you're looking around the pew, what am I going to say? That's right. <laughs> Pretty soon I won't have to say that at all. <laughs> Um, so, members and visitors, we have a coffee hour immediately following the service, and it will be in the narthex, so please feel free to stop by and chat. Next Sunday, May 19th, we celebrate our Sunday Journeys teachers and helpers, as well as our readers. Uh, the Nehemiah action is Tuesday, May 21st, and I'm going to call your attention. This is out in the narthex. This is the sign-up sheet. So if you've not already done so, please sign up. Uh, we hope that you will sit with North Church so that we'll all be together and make a really big statement about our involvement with bread. Also, there is another sign-up sheet right next to it that asks if you need a ride. So please sign that if you do need a ride and we will arrange for you to get there. Uh, the other announcement I wanted to make is that at yesterday's produce market, we distributed 7,350 pounds of produce uh, to 103 families. Uh, 331 total individuals came through. 
We had 14 volunteers, 10 from North Church, and uh, it was quite a display of our produce, apples, blueberries, blackberries, raspberries, avocado, cucumbers, potatoes, onions, and strawberries. Doesn't that sound delicious? Ah, yes, so the next one will be on June 8th. So um, be sure and mark that, I think that's right. Be sure and mark that down on your calendar. Uh, the last thing I wanted to say is May is Mental Health Awareness Month. So Mental Health Awareness Month is a national initiative designed to bring awareness to mental illness and mental health by promoting conversation and education to encourage screenings and treatment to help reduce stigma. Uh, for additional announcements, you can look at your bulletin. I did want to call attention to one, though. Do you feel like you have a really, really good stage voice? I think there are many in this church who would love to talk to Rick McVicker right here uh, because he is producing videos for the Extravagant Welcome uh, Board and he needs voices for those videos. He will provide the script, so all you need to do is practice that script and then take it away. So um, if you have, uh, let's see, be gentle with yourself uh, this week and today especially. Um, and be gentle with those with whom you come in contact. So have a wonderful day. We'll see you out in the narthex. Good morning. Please uh, rise in body or spirit and join me for the invitation to worship. For thus says our God, as a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you. Can a woman forget her nursing child and have no compassion on the child of her womb? Even those may we forget, but I will not forget you. Please remain standing for our opening hymn, God's Eye is on the Sparrow, number 475.
Thank you. you. May be seated. You know, we like to say here that wherever you are on life's journey, uh, you are welcome here. And I want to also add that this journey of self-discovery, this journey of the spiritual journey, it never ends. Uh, we don't get too old for it. We don't retire from it. Uh, it continues. And uh, so in that, in that spirit then, let us open ourselves to this transforming love of God, this wisdom, and uh, we'll first use our prayer for wholeness uh, in unison and then a period of silent prayer. Together, please. Eternal One, you have created us that we would seek you and find you. Yet, we often grow weary or distracted from our journey of discovery. We are often too content to live in the ruts of life rather than climb the mountains of new possibilities. We admit we don't really know how to pray as we ought. Help us to truly open ourselves and trust your spirit to pray for us and through us. The mercy of God is from everlasting to everlasting. It is boundless. It is without end. And friends, in this we find our hope in God's unconditional love of God for each one of us. Amen.
Can my just north just kids friends come on up and bring your moms today? <laughs> All right, I bet you you know why I asked you to bring your moms up today. It's Mother's Day. We are celebrating our mothers and grandmothers and all of those who've shared their motherly love with us. And in today's book, we are going to celebrate many, many different mothers. Our book is called Mother God. It's by Teresa Kim Peskinovsky, illustrated by Ko Lee. Mother God. You know God, the Father, but God is your mother too. You are made in her image. She is making all things new. Waiting for new life to begin, God is a mother in labor. She takes deep breaths until the birth, rejoicing with friend and neighbor. Throughout the day and night, God wakes to nurse the infant at her side. She snuggles her baby gently until he closes his sleepy eyes. When baby tumbles on the floor, God pulls off each tiny sock. She holds her arms out wide and the baby learns to walk. God is Sophia Wisdom, teaching what is true and right. Wisdom works, creates, orders, and plays. She calls us with joy and delight. Over the waters of creation, God is the spirit who hovers. She forms the earth into a bed, and the wide sky it covers. God is a mother hen who gathers chicks under her wings. She plays hide and seek in soft grass behind trees and quiet springs. She protects her cubs from danger, God, the great mother bear, as fierce as she is tender. She guards them in her care. God is l a lurking leopard, secretive, skilled, and strong, teaching her young to swim and climb. She roars and they tag along. With a huge supply of flour, God kneads and bakes good bread. She feeds her entire neighborhood. They feast and all are fed. God is a skillful, skillful seamstress who stitches and sews threads together. She makes clothes for rain, snow, and sun, caring for you in all kinds of weather. Granny, Baba, Halmione, God is a woman with gray hair. She passes down stories of old, rocking softly in a chair. She is the God who sees you. God weeps, mourns, and cries. She comforts you through the longest night, keeping watch until sunrise. She quiets us with her song, singing lullabies in the night. God, our nurturing mother, wraps us in holy moonlight. God is your loving mother. You are ma made in her image too. God calls you beloved. She is making all things new. So I wonder which of these mothers reminds you most of your mother? I wonder how you're celebrating mom today. And I wonder how often you think of God as Mother God. Your reminders of this story are sitting right here with you. <laughs> and they're with you all the time. So we're going to put our hands together. Dear Mother God, thank you for all of those who nurture us with motherly love. Help us to welcome that love into our hearts and share it with those in need. Amen. Amen. Right, off to Sunday journeys we go. witness today comes from Matthew chapter 12. While he was still speaking to the crowds, his mother and his brothers were standing outside wanting to speak to him. Someone told him, look, your mother and your brothers are standing outside wanting to speak to you. But to the one who had told him this, Jesus replied, who is my mother and who are my brothers? And pointing to his disciples, he said, this is my family, for whoever does the will of Abba God 
is heaven, in heaven is my brother and my sister and mother. I had a friend who is a, um, I'm a little bit too loud, thank you. I have a friend who is a, um, a newspaper columnist in Cincinnati a number of years ago. Um, Camilla was a truly progressive voice in Cincinnati. And I would later become her pastor and saw her struggle and eventually die uh, from breast cancer. And uh, she wrote once about her painful experience of having two miscarriages that I want to read to you today. By Mother's Day, I felt empty and wounded. I hated seeing the distended form of pregnant women as they proudly pushed their grocery carts. I could not sympathize with expectant friends when they complained of indigestion or insomnia, swollen ankles or rising blood pressure. I silently screamed at them, oh, let me have your afflictions. If only I could grow a child. Our culture does this to women, she writes. Maybe every culture has. But I'm convinced that we put an unfair premium on motherhood. We sugarcoat and sanctify it. Ask any woman who has tried and not succeeded. Ask married couples who choose not to parent. Ask any single woman. Ask a gay man. Have they not felt more than once like outsiders? like something less than blue chip stock, perhaps even like morally inferior beings? I did. You know, sometimes, we sometimes speak of children as agents of grace, and rightly so. They seem to bring something extra with them. At times, they draw something extra out of, out of others. But having a baby doesn't necessarily make a woman an agent of grace or loving. Nor does it elevate her in creation scheme. No, if one becomes motherly, it is through one's choices and actions how one nurtures. Mothering in the most profound sense is an exercise of the heart, an exciting, humbling, lifelong adventure offered to each of us, male or female, regardless of marital status or age or sexual or gender orientation. Now, in our ancient witness today, from the 12th chapter of Matthew, it describes Jesus' adventures on the Sabbath, how his disciples broke the law when they walked through the field and plucked grain and ate it. How he broke the law by healing the sick. How he got under the skin of the Pharisees when people called him the son of David, implying that he was the liberator. And how he further annoyed them by advocating radical forgiveness. It was a very long day, yet in strong, broad strokes, Jesus explained his understanding of the nature of God. Finally, we learn that his mother and brothers were waiting so patiently to speak to him. Perhaps Jesus was overstressed, who knows? But he snaps back. Who is my mother? And who are my brothers? Or perhaps he dared to assail their belief that our biological ties supersede other relationships. And so stretching out his hand towards his disciples, he said, here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever do, does the will of Abba, God, in heaven, 
is my brother and sister and mother. And so, according to Jesus, the primary relationship is not biological. Jesus, he seems to say this. But between an individual and God, they, we, become linked like brother and sister, mother, father, and child by how we reflect the divine presence, by how freely the holy mystery flows through us. In another Jesus story, somebody cries out from the crowd, blessed is the womb that bore you and the breasts that nursed you. And Jesus responds, blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and follow it. Now, I don't know about you, but this sounds kind of jarring, even kind of rude. But for that great spiritual master, Jesus, he wasn't anti-mother or he wasn't anti-Mother's Day. <laughs> but rather, I think he wanted to draw attention beyond this to the Divine Mother and to those who reflect this reality to others. Clyde Edgerton, a singer and writer from Apex, North Carolina, tells a story of Maddie Rigsby in his novel, Walking Across Egypt. I'm sure some of you have read that. She's an unpretentious, old, sick widow, the kind of person some of us might dismiss as kind of a hick. She lives alone in a modest home in the South. Two things you gotta know about Maddie. She loved to feed people with her home cooking, and she loved her church where she's been in charge of the Lottie Moon Missionary Society for five years. <laughs> Maddie's narrow life gets interesting when she takes in this grungy, thieving juvenile delinquent and cooks for him, cleans him up, and gives him a chance. To the horror of her own grown kids and to her church, she even lets this orphan ne'er-do-well think that she's his grandmother. Well, after a prayer and consultation with the pastor, the head deacon decides he must tell Maddie that she has gone too far. In his mind, he builds his argument. You cannot take in, support, hide, and conspire with a known criminal. You can treat him well in prison. The scriptures even speak of that. But anything beyond that is wrong. Beyond that is where the devil comes in. It's clear. But Maddie has been snagged by a piece of the gospel. Whatever you do unto the least of these, you do unto God. It fills her head with a new logic. It fills her heart with love. It activates her dull life. Her kids, who haven't paid much attention to her, are unhappy when she wants to become the delinquent's legal guardian. But Maddie is going further. She is imagining new familial relationships that are entirely beyond biology. And so, when we have a day called Mother's Day, I hope we are celebrating more than housekeeping, although it is certainly important to show appreciation for that. In a card store I once saw, it said, Mom, for the years you cooked for me, did my laundry, and cleaned up after me, what I can't understand is why did I ever move out? <laughs> for many years now, people have known that these duties are not gender-specific. A man is just as genetically equipped to do them as a woman. <laughs> and I hope that we're celebrating more than the biological ability of women to procreate, although this is certainly good to celebrate that. Rather, I hope that we are celebrating the caring and nurturing of mothers 
something which points to God. New Testament scholar Marcus Borg pointed out that the command of Jesus, when he said to be compassionate as God is compassionate, that the word compassion literally means to feel with or to suffer with. And so this is a call to feel the suffering of others as if they were yours. And in the Hebrew, the word usually translated as compassion is the plural of the noun that in its singular form means womb. The womb is the image for the central quality of God. And so Jesus' statement to be compassionate as God is compassionate means to be like a womb, the way God is like a womb, it is to feel as God feels and to act as God acts in a, in a life-giving and nourishing way. But I'm afraid the church has too often portrayed God exclusively as male and powerful and often very violent. And we have neglected this other aspect, this aspect of God. Adrian Rich, that marvelous author, once wrote this. Because young humans remain dependent upon nurture for much longer period than other mammals, and because of the division of labor long established in human groups, where women not only bear and suckle, but are assigned almost total responsibility for children, most of us first know both love and disappointment, power and tenderness in the person of a woman. And because of this, mother is a powerful metaphor for God. The phrase, a face only a mother can love, points to the unconditional dedication of God toward humanity. Sometimes humanity has a face that only a mother God can love. Elizabeth Johnson, in her classic book, She Who Is, wrote this, the compassion of God the mother ensures that she loves the weak and the dispossessed as well as the strong and the beautiful. We do not have to be wonderful according to the external norms to elicit her love, for this is freely given by virtue of the maternal relationship itself. God looks upon all with a mother's love that makes the beloved beautiful. Human persons cannot earn or merit this love, but it is freely and abundantly given. And so this morning, this is what I want to underline here, that this is the nature of the divine presence, an unconditional, unmerited love. This loving, nurturing presence is not earned by us in any way. And to become more aware of this life-giving presence, we don't focus upon our own goodness. We don't focus upon our own achievements. In fact, these can actually obscure this entirely gratuitous, unconditional, cosmic, motherly love, which is the very ground of our being. The great spiritual quest, it seems to me, is to see that we are living and moving in God in this womb of love that is working to prepare us, each of us, for a rebirth, to be compassionate and to establish justice. I recently came upon this article in, in, in the NPR website, and it was about a new study of parental styles. And the study concluded that children who were told that they were more special than other children or superior were more likely to develop 
narcissistic traits over time. An overinflated sense of self, entitlement, lack of empathy, and overvaluing of their own abilities and skills. Well meaning mothers and fathers who overpraise and emphasize a child's specialness can actually be doing harm. Instead, the study found that what actually leads to a healthy self esteem is parental warmth. Professor and author Jean Twang comments that people have confused overvaluing specialness with love. We've confused overvaluing specialness with love. And she suggests instead of saying you're special, say I love you. And this, it seems to me, is the style of the Divine Mother who heals us not with praise but with love. This love, this compassionate presence comes to us freely and is not dependent upon anything we do, embracing us and making us whole. As Carl Jung said, I would rather be whole than good. This is an important spiritual insight to learn and relearn. This is a reality for us to experience not just once, but over and over and over again, becoming a, a source of deep and unshakable peace that we might open ourselves to the Divine Mother, no matter what we have done or not done, whether we've been special or decidedly ordinary, and to hear her whisper to our hearts, I love you, I love you, I love you. Amen.
Thank you. At this time, we're going to uh, share our prayers together as a uh, family of faith. And uh, I'm going to take those prayer slips. If you want to pass those to the uh, center part here of the, uh, of the pew. all of them okay let's uh, let's pray gracious loving God we give you thanks for this tradition of faith and for the many ways that we understand you using many metaphors and images we thank you for this image of a mother and a mother's love and nourishing compassion to help us understand what you are and what you do. We pray, O oh God, for all of those this morning who are mourning the loss or the absence of their mother. We pray for those for whom the image of mother is a difficult one, who have had strained relationships or no relationships at all. We pray, O oh God, for those who wish to be mothers and yet have not been able, making this holiday a, a painful time. May we, O oh God, enlarge our hearts with compassion and understanding. And we give thanks, O oh God, for the ability to nurture and raise our children, the gift and the challenges. We pray that you strengthen us for this task, that you give us wisdom and Give us the abilities that we need. And so hear our prayers as we offer them to you. One prays for Mary as she recovers from two surgeries. Prayers for Willie as he has surgery on Friday. God, please continue to be with them. One prays for comfort and peace for Cynthia Speller on the death of her mother. One prays for healing for Dee as she is having knee surgery on Thursday. Jen prays for strength for my sister-in-law Stephanie, upon her diagnosis of breast cancer, and for my brother-in-law, Dirk, over the loss of his job. And Jen also prays thanksgiving for all prayers of loving support of my family received from Just North during my dad's illness and the aftermath of his passing. Catherine prays, Two for two elderly sisters, 93 and 96, died this week within days of each other. Um, Francis, I think this is Francis and Margaret, rest in peace in the arms of your heavenly family. Ellen prays for ongoing prayers for my son Paul and she says, please bring peace to every corner of this precious earth. Ellen also prays gratefulness for my daughters who was able to take, <coughs> I was able to take to Michigan for my brother's funeral yesterday. Josh prays for all who are struggling today, emotionally and mentally. And also he prays for 
all the artists and people involved in the heart of Concord Art Show, May 17. Judy prays blessings for Jeannie. One prays with gratitude for all the nourishing people in my life, especially in my church family. One prays thanksgiving for this beautiful day. Valerie offers prayers for my nephew Joey, his wife Jeannie died today. Sharon prays for healing and strength for Judy, who's recovering from pneumonia. Another prays, please pray for me, dealing with all-consuming grief and a large loss. Thank you. And one prays for Abba, Father, decrease my pain. So we hold these prayers before you as a community, as a family, confident, O oh God, that even when we cannot find the words that your spirit prays through us, and may our prayers not be so much ways of changing you, but ways in which you change us. And may we go where our best prayers take us. We conclude by using the Jesus prayer together, please. Our mother and father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning, North Church. Good morning. I'm Louise Chrisman, and I'm here on behalf of the Stewardship Board to talk about a special UCC offering we will have next week called Strengthen the Church. Each year on Pentecost, the UCC collects this offering to support church development within our denomination. Funds go for everything from helping new church get, churches get started to fulfilling grants that are requested by various congregations for leadership development, new ministries, and initiatives that churches may apply for. How appropriate that we collect these funds on Pentecost. Next Sunday is Pentecost, the birthday of the church when the Holy Spirit descended and called us to reach out to all people with loving kindness. I'm part of our recently organized Dreamin' team. If you have not yet attended a listening session, please sign up in the narthex for Monday evening, May 20th, or Wednesday morning, May 22nd. Our committee work so, so far reminds me of how important but scary and challenging taking on a dream can be. This offering supports the dreams of UCC congregations everywhere. Who knows, North Church may even ask to tap into their grant program for a specific specific initiative in the future. So next Sunday, we hope to see you here, decked out in your red, to celebrate Pentecost, the birthday of the church, and please give generously to this special offering, which helps, us all, helps all of us be the hands of, and feet of God in our community. Uh, our worship as we take this morning's offering.
we present these gifts as a token of our response to your inexpressible gift of compassion and love and wisdom in our lives. And we pray that we may work to dedicate our entire selves, our entire lives, to your purposes, as did Jesus, who we follow. Amen. Afterwards, I want to remind you we're going to have a little coffee hour out here. We hope that you get to stay and we get to each meet each other and know each other a little bit better. And now as we go into this world, may we do so in peace and have courage. May we hold on to what is good, returning to no one, evil for evil. May we strengthen the weak and help the suffering. May we love and serve God and our neighbors. And may we know that God blesses us and keeps us. May we know that God is kind and gracious to us. May we know that God looks upon us the way a mother looks at a child, with favor and grants to us peace, now and forever. Amen. Let's share a sign of this peace with each other, with a handshake or a hug, saying, peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you.